Boketov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here on YouTube. Uh, those of you that are watching on live stream as well, we actually were able to publish our first uh, live stream uh, video this morning about this very breaking news. So it was live there on live stream if you're wanting to catch things live. And it is also live on Roku TV. Uh, we will be updating you just as soon as we can. There's been several people in the comments there letting people know how you can actually watch live stream on Roku TV. We still have not gotten our internet installed here as of yet. So we're kind of uh, winging it here on trying to get these things uh, up to you guys so you can see what's going on. Uh, but this very breaking news coming out this morning uh, from the Drive, the War Zone here, an article they were uh, uh, covering that NBC News brought out a, a report of a Brigadier General, Jonathan uh, uh, Bagrab, Bargab, I forget his last, Bra Braga, uh, General Jonathan Braga, who's a director of operations in Syria and in uh, uh, Iraq, he spoke and confirmed with the journalist from NBC that indeed there were hundreds of Russians that were killed in this battle that happened in Syria near Deir Ezzor back on February the 7th. Now, those of you that know, we actually broke this story on February the 8th. There were some out there saying that we were falsifying the information. We saw as many as 10 uh, Russian mercenaries were killed. Uh, that's the way we, we actually, we labeled them not mercenaries, but uh, um, oh, it doesn't matter, contract, contract uh, fighters there that were there. Uh, the Russia, the general here says he confirms it was hundreds uh, that uh, as, as the report was coming out. But from what we can gather thus far, it seems to be that that was more of the mercenaries that were fighting, not the mercenaries, but the uh, pro-Assad forces that were fighting in that region as well, which were part of the uh, villages there, the different ethnic groups there fighting along uh, with the Russian uh, Russian mercenaries from the Wagner group. Now, the Wagner group is very similar to that of what we would call uh, uh, the, um, uh, gosh, what is it, Black, uh, I can't even think of the name there. I said it, said it good on Israeli News Live live stream, but it's <laughs> Blackwater. There we go. Blackwater's uh, contract forces as well that we've seen used in Iraq extensively. A lot, a lot of issues came up there, but Russia's just learned from the U.S., uh, how to deal with that. I, I really appreciated the general here and his comments here uh, because he said that they were coming under attack directly. He says that they contacted his Russian counterparts. The Russians were saying that it was not their forces that are involved. Uh, I want to play with play for you what NBC News had to say on this matter here. I think you'll find it very insightful uh, indeed. So let's take a listen to this, this particular clip here from NBC News. Uh, Richard Engel travels to the scene of a fierce battle between U.S. forces and Russian mercenaries supporting the pro-Syrian regime. The commanding officer describes what happened on the night of February the 7th, 2018. And we actually broke the story hours well, that night, within that happening. We receiving uh, artillery rounds in around right where you're standing. Upwards of uh, 30 different artillery rounds. And uh, that led to obviously immediate, uh, uh, again, phone conversation with the Russians of, uh, to inquire what was was going on to cease this if they had any uh, knowledge of this so you called said stop this yes it is what response did you get uh those are not our forces and at that time it was a uh, you know confusing and there have been reports that two to three hundred of the of the, the russian force was killed is that is that accurate as far as you your assessment yeah that, we've seen that in open reports as well and that's uh, i would say close to our estimates as well were you worried during this fire no, I do appreciate the uh, American general because he does uh, have uh, what I would consider to be a very sincere heart in what he's saying there uh, in trying to protect the American forces on the ground there. He was asked, though, whether or not he was concerned if this was going to escalate into a bigger uh, conflict with Russia, and he said that they were concerned about that. Uh, and, of course, when they say they're Russian forces, though, I am wondering because uh, we found one particular Russian that was involved in this Wagner battle that uh, was really been bombarded by reporters in Russia after the fight. Uh, and he come out and said, okay, I've had enough. 14 of our soldiers were actually killed over there with the Wagner group. Now, maybe because the Wagner group may have been directing this firefight and Russia trying to play it down, much like what I saw in Ukraine when we had uh, reporters there in Ukraine when the battle was going on between East Ukraine and West Ukraine. Uh, and we saw American mercenaries fighting as well, but in Ukrainian uniforms. 
uh, the you reported there recognized that it was an American when she heard him speaking, but he refused to speak to her, but he spoke enough English where you could tell sound more like a southerner from the United States than it did uh, from Great Britain or, or, or any other country in the world. That's being used more and more by superpowers. They're using these mercenary forces to try to fight battles to where it doesn't drag their countries directly into a battle. Uh, and I can understand, you know, I hate to see that it happen. I, I don't support the fact that the United States is in Syria. I think we should be out of Syria, let the uh, Russian and Syrian government deal with the problem there. It would have, this war would have ended long ago if we weren't there. Uh, but I do also, because of our countrymen, I don't want to see American forces killed either. And of course, the United States responded the way they did with the air, air power, which did kill two or three hundred uh, uh, soldiers on the on the battlefield there. Uh, of course, the counter part of this report is is that the Syrian government said that they were trying to take out ISIS that were guarding an oil platform, and this is what they were after. Uh, you know, you, you have to understand when we look at the situation on the ground in the Middle East. There, American soldiers have to carry out the orders of the United States government. Although I don't agree with the United States being there, other than if they're there to protect the Kurdish people, because somebody's got to protect the Kurds. And that's kind of a sticking point too with Syrians, because a lot of Syrians do not like the Kurds very well, because they're trying to get their own state. Uh, and I think the majority of Turkey, or at least half the country of Turkey, should belong to the Kurdish people. But you know, you really don't need a state. You just need to have autonomy for these people. Uh, and they have been one of the best fighting forces against ISIS. And I think this is what really angered the deep state in America uh, because the Kurds were taking out their, their militant forces that President Barack Obama created in the first place. But then you have generals like this that are just trying to keep their men safe on the ground. And so I do appreciate that. And coming from a military family, uh, I can certainly understand uh, what military people go through because most U.S. servicemen, they're not there just to go out there and want to kill people. They're there to get the job done that they were commanded to do and go back home. Uh, but when it comes to the political side, America needs to get out of Syria, period. It's the only way the war is going to stop. But you know, it's not going to happen because we're not fighting a war for America or for democracy. We're fighting a Roman battle for the Catholic Church in order to dominate the entire region and to wipe out anything that is Christian or remotely related to Christianity, which would include the Yazdis, the Kurds, the Christians in the area, all these people that are were more tightly bound together. This is exactly what Rome would like to wipe out, especially the Russian Orthodox and the Eastern Orthodox religions, so that they have nothing that can oppose them. And I can't help but wonder if this is not what's going on with this poisoning that happened over in Ukraine uh, that we reported on earlier today. They're only trying to, uh, they're trying to utilize that particular situation there to force Russia into a war. And if you watch what President Trump is doing right now, he is getting everybody out of the administration that opposes any kind of war with Russia. We found out from Maria Zakharova, the spokesperson for the Russian Federation there, that they wanted Tillerson out because Tillerson was willing to work with the Russians to bring peace. I didn't know that. But on the other hand, Mike Pompeo is more like Hillary Clinton. Let's have war with Russia. You know, this concerns me greater and greater, especially when I found out that President uh, Trump had been a Democrat for many years of his life there and then converts over to, to become a Republican. That's a setup, friends. And the Republicans fell for this hook, line, and sinker. Oh, my gosh. We, we are in a, I mean, of course, Hillary just is bad, if not worse, though. I mean... And, and as much as I really was hopeful that President Trump was going to work out, bring some peace into this world, get peace a little bit longer, it's not going to happen. Biblical prophecy is going to unfold like never before. I mentioned on Israeli News Live on live stream this morning about this bombing that took place. This poor old elderly man here lost his wife there when they were trying to flee Afrin, getting out of there, and came under uh, uh, attack by Turkish forces there and killed his wife. I don't know how many more may have been killed in this assault, but he was just trying to flee Afrin and lost the love of his life. And very sad indeed. And we so sorry for the, the Kurdish people and what they are suffering, the Kurdish, the Yazdis and the Christians, uh, and even the Arabs that are in the town of Afrin. Very sad situation indeed. I'm Stephen Benoon. We'll be talking to you later today. Shalom. God bless you. And thank you for watching.